may be already familiar with the term infrastructure, but what does it mean? Does it only refer to the network or server that we used? In order for us to fully understand what is infrastructure, we must first have a clear, clear definition of uh, infrastructure. Infrastructure refers to the technology and system that supports the operation of the organization. This can include a wide variety of components such as uh, servers, network, storage system, cabling, and even software application and security system. In this video, what we will discuss is the infrastructure and documentation, and you will be able to learn the different components that make up typical infrastructure and how to document it. You will learn first is the components of uh, structured cabling, second is network documentation in which I'll give you a workbook and teach you how to create a typical network diagram from your uh, organization. So this will be an activity that will be included in the download section. And the third one is change in management, meaning to say, for example, you want to change or have a changes in your switch configuration, you should also have a document for this one in order for you to have a proper documentation of every move that you have for your troubleshooting as well. So let's get started. Structured cabling is a standardized approach to designing and installing a cabling infrastructure for communication system in a building or uh, campuses. The main components of the structured cabling includes would be the following. As you can see here, we have the following cabling components. We have the entrance facilities, MDF room, demarcation or the DMARC, IDF room, vertical cabling, and uh, horizontal cabling. Don't worry guys, I'll explain what's the difference between the two, but it's too obvious, it's already like Shown right, it's vertical, horizontal, but I'll, I'll make sure that you will be able to identify the difference between the two. And lastly is the work area. These components work together to provide a standardized and organized cabling infrastructure that support various communication systems and services in a building or a campus. Now we have seven uh, components of uh, structured cabling. We have uh, entrance facility is the first one. Okay, now guys, can you guess where is the entrance facility is here? Okay, if you guess that this should be the entrance facilities, you're correct. This is the location where an incoming network such as internet connect with the corporate network and includes all the necessary components to make the transition from the WAN or anything managed by the ISP. So if you have any incoming connection from uh, ISP, usually it's coming from the entrance facilities. Next on the list would be the MDF or the main distribution frame. The MDF connects to the ISP IDFs on uh, campus and nearby workstation. Um, basically, it is also known as the equipment room. It is an environment or a controlled space that hosts the main frost connect and also the centralized point of interconnection for the company or the campus uh, local area network or the wide area network. And this term MDF can either refer to the racks holding the network equipment or to the room that houses both the racks and the equipment. The following would be the demarcation point because this is the part where an ISP network ends and the organization network begins. So meaning to say after this one, anything that beyond this demarcation point already belongs to the organization or maybe you will be the one handling those uh, devices. Moving on, the next would be the IDF room. It provides an intermediate connection between the MDF and end user equipment on each floor and each building. Again, the term IDF can refer either to the racks holding the network equipment or to the room that houses both the racks and the equipment. Next would be the vertical cables and the horizontal cabling. Okay, let's start first with the vertical cables. 
It is used to provide interconnection between the telecommunication rooms and trans facilities, equipment rooms, or buildings. If you look closely, uh, okay, can, can you take a guess where are the vertical cables here? Okay, this would be the vertical cables. From the name itself, it's vertical. It connects inter. It does an interconnection between telecommunication room. If you see the cables here. Now for the horizontal cabling, this connects workstation to closest to the data room and also to the switch house into the server rooms. So this would be the horizontal cabling, the one on the red. You see here it, it runs to the workstation. Okay. Now you can definitely see the difference between the two. So don't get confused. So the first one is the vertical cables used to provide interconnection between the telecommunication room while the horizontal cabling is nearest to the workstation. And lastly will be the work area. Work area means this is where you sit at the, or the end user. Structured cabling is important for a number of reasons. Firstly, it ensures that the network is able to handle the required capacity and the traffic, and it is able to support the needs of the organization. This includes things like scalability, reliability, and security. Additionally, well-designed infrastructure and cabling can also help to minimize downtime and reduce the costs associated with the network maintenance and troubleshooting. Following are some of the cable installation tips that will help prevent physical layer failures. First on the list is documentation. You need to have like every data port or jack port, patch panel, and even the connector or circuit to be uh, labeled in a documented manner. I prefer to use color-coded uh, cables for dif different purposes. For example, I have like a yellow cable for data and then the blue cable for uh, phone lines. And then be certain to update your documentation as you make changes to the network. The more you document, the easier it will be to troubleshoot, move, or add cable segments in the future. Second would be the termination. Don't leave more than one inch of exposed twisted pair before any uh, cable termination. Crosstalk, a problem that occurs when the wires is crossed, is increased more than one inch of uh, exposed twisted pair cable is left. Next is uh, bending. This is the common one. There is a specified bend radius for each type of cable, but you know, I think this is just like a common sense that you can e definitely see if the cable is uh, bended, not correctly bended. So you need to make sure to maintain this uh, restriction with care. Next would be the continuity. To ensure that every piece of installed cable transmit data reliably, use cable tester. This and this one you won't have to search for errors later on the well, once it is already deployed, you will try to troubleshoot so as much as possible. You do a table use a cable tester before you deploy it. Next is a tight cable. Okay, I, I know some of you guys wants to like have this uh like a velcro strap, please make sure that the cables are not too tight, tightly secured, that it can squeeze their outer covering, as this can cause data errors and also challenging to identify when you're trying to look for it. Next is the electromagnetic interference or the EMI uh, sources. So you need to make sure that it, the installed cable is at least three feet away from a fluorescent lights or any uh, EMI uh, sources. Uh, some of it's uh, like power lines, television, copiers, and anything that's with the electric electrical uh, activity. And then this too is the patch panels and uh, cable trays. Okay, for the patch panel, use patch panels to organize and uh, connect lines. And then cable trays, you can use this one for uh, cable management. This one will surely uh, secure your uh, cables in 